Thank God you're here. Where have you been, bitch? Where have you bloody been? I don't know. What is currently happening, programs? Welcome to the Grid VR, where I'll be bringing you this week's news in virtual reality. It's Sunday, the 14th of July, 2019, and all I can say this week is, son, it's time to get ahead, sir. We've got like three months worth of shit, so let's just kick on. And much more. Today, I'm going to cover off the main events to keep you in the loop. So stay locked, enjoy, and welcome back to the Grid VR. I haven't been around for a few months and I just wanted to provide a little context as to why. Sadly, there has been no exciting VR news. Just nothing. No announcements, no big events, no games, no new headsets, no innovations, like nothing. A hole? A hole would be something. No, it was nothing. Yep, just nothing. Not even turtles. I like turtles. Me too, kid. Me too. With that said, let's do. Oculus did a headset that doesn't need wires or a PC to run, so when you get sick of your actual space while virtually gaming, you can finally escape the mundane and fuck off into the backyard with your headset on and look at virtual dirt with your real feet touching actual dirt. Shit. Quest has a range of games including short experiences like Star Wars Vader Immortal which supports cross-buy and so is free on Rift if you buy it on Quest. Two games like Onward, Phantom Covert Ops, artistic options like Tilt Brush and Medium as well as classics like Moss, Beat Saber and Robo Recall. Apparently thanks to all of these things coupled with Beyond the Community adoption, the headset has exceeded Oculus's expectations in terms of sales. So that's a warm fuzzy feeling right there. The Oculus Quest is a totally standalone VR headset for 400 bucks that I covered in full detail including all the specs in this video here, so check the link in the description below for that video. Also this excellent video by Mike aka Virtual Reality Oasis that covers the full unboxing and startup tips, as well as a video that shows you how to play Steam PC VR games on Oculus Quest by Ra Marcus. To PC VR, the Oculus Rift S is a modest upgrade to the Oculus Rift that brings improved resolution and lenses to the Rift PC ecosystem. It doesn't need sensors like the OG Rift, so you only need a single USB port and one display port. It has redesigned touch controllers for better tracking, and the tracking is good, in part thanks to a camera on top of the headset to make sure that your ceiling is free from monsters after 8pm, which is when everyone knows that's the time that what monsters come out. The Rift S is also 400 bucks and I covered the headset, all the specs and everything you need to know in this video here. So if you want to know more, just check the link in the description below to see what's what in the land of 1.5. There's also a great troubleshooting guide linked in the description if you are a current Rift S owner and having issues, plus a link to an unboxing and setup video from Cass and Cherry. Then there's the Valve Index, which came out of nowhere, unlike the Half-Life content we were hoping to see. No surprise, motherfucker. There. The index will set you back a grand for the full kit, including the headset itself, two of Valve's base stations version 2.0, and the Knuckles controllers, which are commercially labelled the index controllers, which you can see more of in this video here by Zimtok. If you have a Vive or Vive Pro already, you can just get the headset, which is compatible with your current Vive ones and base stations for $4.99, just the index controllers for $2.79, or the headset and controllers for $7.99. Index has arguably the best tracking, the best controllers, the best field of view for current gen mid-spec consumer PC hardware, the same dual LCD 1440 by 1600 resolution panels as an Oculus Quest, 120 to 144 hz refresh rate, near field off-air speakers, not headphones but speakers that sit just off your ears, a front USB expansion bay, stereo cameras and a recommended minimum spec of an Intel quad-core CPU and GTX 1070 graphics card. So this whole kit and the price makes the Vive Pro redundant and a flash as Index is also compatible with, as you would expect, every Steam VR game. A handful of users have had dramas with the controllers and some say it's not 2.5 times as good as a Rift S going by the price, but this is what premium costs. 
And if I could afford one, I would buy one. But I can't get one in Australia, or Canada for that matter. If you want to see if you can get one in your country, then there's a link in the description for that. Also, they're currently sold out, with the next batch due September 30th. So there's that too. Another compelling reason to get an index is the Boneworks trailers shown off by Node from Brandon's team over at Stress Level Zero who also did Duck Hunt VR. The game looks off its head, uses Half-Life assets and is a shining example of what the index controllers can do. Finally on the headset front is the HP Reverb which is HP's new WMR headset that has a very sexy combined resolution of 4K or 4320 by 20 2160 that shits on the competition at this price point which by the way is only 600 bucks for the headset and controllers or 650 for the pro version that has replaceable face masks the reverb is super comfortable and weighs in at a respectable 500 grams which is much lighter than a vive pro it doesn't require external sensors thanks to microsoft's inside out tracking has sharp lcd displays with an rgb sub pixel layout a wide sweet spot on the fresnel lenses and built-in over-ear headphones. All up, a lot to like. Honestly though, the Windows ones kind of suck, the WMR platform is okay, the cable length is really short at only 3 meters, there's no IPD adjustment, a high graphics card is required and they aren't readily available. So there's a few things not to like also. Personally though, if 600 bucks was what I had and I didn't mind those bugs, this would be the one to get. If you want to see more of the HP reverb then you can check out Tyrell Woods unboxing and first impressions vid which I'll link in the description below. And briefly, Defector is a spy-tastic rift only game from Twisted Pixel, the developers of Wilson's Heart. Punch, shoot, glide and interact your way through a Bond-esque universe spanning 5, roughly 45 minute levels. A ton of replayability is on offer here as the branching moments you are offered in game actually make a difference. And there's guns. It's fun, fast paced and 20 bucks which is a bargain for VR and you can see E- play the first 30 minutes of Defector in the video linked in the description below. Turtle Rock Studios, the team behind Left 4 Dead, has released Journey of the Gods on both Rift and Quest thanks to funding by Oculus. It has a very Zelda Breath of the Wild feel, is 30 bucks, supports cross buy, and you can see the game in action in this video by Paradise Decay, which I'll link in the description below. Spider-Man Far From Home VR is a free VR experience that lets you wave your arms like you just don't care around the city and fight a big ass robot while trying to work your underperforming web slingers. This is a short 15 to 20 minute VR experience, not including the replayability, is available on the Oculus Store, Steam VR and PSVR for free right now and you can see Nathy show you the web ropes in the video I've linked in the description below. Also, Facebook have allegedly signed deals with Ubisoft to license two stealth based IPs in the form of Splinter Cell and Assassin's Creed. This would likely mean the games will be Oculus exclusive, so we are going to need bulk loads of rectal cream to soothe the pain, but I'd rather see these games in VR and Oculus than not see them at all. Facebook Reality Labs is making leaps in facial tracking and codec avatars that will bring a personal you into VR. This isn't real time, you need to be scanned with a complex array of cameras first, but the team look to use machine learning to improve the system and one day let you build your own avatar using a couple of photos or videos. Also worth noting, this extends to full bodies too. Big screen TV is now a thing on all VR headsets and lets you watch flat or 3D movies, music, sports, anime, Twitch and more in VR with your friends across 50 plus channels. It's totally free, live 24 seven and the team has a strong roadmap to scale the service further. Walt Disney Animation Studios will be debuting a VR short story from Bruce Wright called A Kite's Tale at SIGGRAPH this year. It combines hand-drawn animation with high-tech VR to present a story about a puppy, two kites and a pompous dragon and it's brilliant to see Disney continuing on their endeavours in the VR short story telling medium. And Respawn, the team behind Titanfall and Apex Legends are set to share more info about their upcoming AAA VR title at Oculus Connect 6 in September this year, which is not going to be Titanfall VR, but it's still... Uh. 
And if you want to find out more about that one or any of the other topics I've covered today, as always, all the links are in the description. And finally, I'd like to spare a minute for all the VRs that have died over the last few months. R.I.P. VRs. R.I.P. And that's this week on The Grid VR. You can help support this channel by grabbing exclusive rewards on Patreon. And if you like this video, then crush that like button, have your say in the comments below, and hit the XO logo to subscribe if you wanna. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.